Hello again. This here is a 260N MOSFET. I'm showing that you don't need the pads when you have separate heat sinks. It can dissipate a lot more heat directly mounted onto the heat sink. In this video, I'm going to be showing a how to do it yourself ZVS. And this is all the components here. These two little red tabs are just little jumpers to make it a solderless system. And I'm mounting the MOSFET 260Ns into their place on here. Having the jumpers on here makes it a little bit more difficult to get these lined up in here. And this is what I made the jumper tabs out of. And these are the 100 ohm resistors for the gates. Each gate has to have its own resistor with a common source, which is the 12 volt power supply. These are 10 kilo ohm resistors between the gate and source, and they can be as small as a quarter watt. These are the fast diodes that kind of do the magic on a ZVS to make it switch without having a driver. These are FR307s. And these are the grounds, which connect to the source of each MOSFET to a common source. And here I'm putting in some 15 volt zeners, which I found that the zeners don't let it work right. So I ended up going without zeners, even though I'm putting them in here. I had a problem when I first started it and ended up removing them and haven't had the problem since. And being that it's on a 12 volt power source, it should never go over 20 volts. And when you're doing multiple components, through one of these screw terminals, you always definitely want to check to make sure after you tighten it down that one of your components doesn't want to pull out. So it's good to give it a little tug because sometimes they may slide out of the way and not tighten down. So it's good to check. As you can see, that's what I'm having a little problem here with, but I ended up getting it fixed and got it working good. You always want really good connections. And this is one of the outputs to the Tesla coil, the white wire, which would go to your primary. And your inductor goes on the same, which is your drain. And both of the inductors go to a common source. And that just came off of a standard ZVS driver.
Your main power source powers the inductors directly. Your variable power supply, which is always best to use because things can happen when you surge a ZVS, which is what I found. That's why I run the gates on a separate supply because it will oscillate on its own without the main power source. But you do have to have a mutual ground between both of your power supplies. And this is the other output that would go to your primary of your Tesla coil. And then I typically use my caps right on my Tesla coil, which seems to work very well. And here it is, minus the zeners. You can see where the blue is the gate power and the black is the ground and the inductors is the positive. And then here's the schematic for this driver. And then I also have the audio schematic for playing music through your ZVS. And when starting the ZVS, when you're turning the gates on, I use this fluorescent tube to let me know when the gates are oscillating correctly, which will light it up like it is there. And then I can turn on the power, the main power supply, and start turning up the volts. ZVS can be a little tricky to tune. They're a little finicky, but with a little bit of time, you can figure them out, as long as you're in resonance. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Thank you.